Hello everyone and welcome to another Dragonfire 360 tutorial. Today we're going to be doing this here. I'm going to show you how to um, use some motion tracking and uh, make a mask to mask out this eye and do this uh, Cyclops feature here. Um, I know technically it's not a Cyclops because I have three eyes, not just one, but either way you get the idea. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, you can see the node set up here in the compositor is oh, where am I going with it? It's fairly simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you do, how to do that. So let's go ahead and open up a new project here. And first thing we we'll want to do is delete default cube because you cannot do a tutorial without deleting the default cube. It's just it's in the law. Okay. So let's go to motion, motion tracking. And let's go ahead and I'm going to change some things around here a little bit just so I can turn on screencast keys so you can see what, what keys I'm typing alright and um, let's go ahead and change this up here to the node editor and we're going to use the compositing nodes here so click on this little one here go ahead and hit use nodes and use backdrop Drag this down here, somewhere in there, and I'll just hit period to center that up. Oops. There we go. Okay, now. We'll get back to that in a minute. Next thing we want to do is add our movie file. So let's go ahead and hit open and select the movie here. Okay, and it's uh, pretty simple. It is actually 468 frames long. So we'll go ahead and set that and get our timeline visible here. And if you scrub through it, you can see I'm just moving my eyes around like that basically okay so let's go back to frame one and first thing we want to do is let's zoom in here a little bit and let's go ahead and set a tracking marker here um, before we do that we want to go to under our objects here and we don't want to do it under the camera we want to make a new one for object so we're not doing a camera solve here we'll just rename that to eye mask Okay, so this uh, tracker that we're going to put is going to be for the mask. So let's go ahead and just control click and kind of center this up a bit. And then just go ahead and hit this to start tracking. And once it gets done tracking here, shouldn't take too long. Oh, uh, one of the things you want to do too when you're making the trackers or your markers, um, you want to use something that is flat. It has no sheen to it. Um, it has a matte finish because if there's any reflections, it can make it harder to track. So you want to use uh, flat markers. And since my forehead is kind of light, I use a dark marker instead of a bright. If you have a dark surface, you'd want to use a, a bright marker of some kind. Okay. And also, you'd want to, uh, in most cases, you'd want to use more than one tracker. I'm only using one marker because of the. Um, I don't turn my head a whole lot in this video. If I did, uh, for to get uh, perspective views and things like that, you'd want to track at least two points to get a perspective. Okay. Um, now, where was I? Okay, we've done this. Now let's go ahead and move on over to mask. So down here where it says tracking, go up to mask. And the thing we're going to do now is we're going to start our mask. So... Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And let's select this eye over here on the left because we're going to use this eye to put up here. And the reason why we're doing that is because the light is coming from this angle right here. And so it's brightest over here and darkest over here. So we want that to match the forehead so we don't have much blending to do. Okay, and all we do is just control click just to, just to do like we did before. Now, I'm going to show you too... Um, 
you want to go in a counterclockwise direction and the reason why is because if you go in a clockwise direction it puts the um, it puts these in the inside these little handles and we want them to be on the outside and uh, there's a reason for that and I'll show you later when we do a f our feathering it comes in handy um, now there's an easy way to fix that but I'll show you um, let me start over again um, if you go this way you see they're on the outside and now to close these loop you just press um, alt C and that will make the close these little handles here you can grab them and you can turn them and that's what they do right there okay now uh, just basically get the outline of the eye it doesn't have to be perfect um, we could just re grab shift and grab some of these bring them down just a little bit okay get the idea and now we got to uh, if we scroll through the timeline here you'll see that it does not track with the eye so, and the reason for that is we need to parent it to this marker up here so let's go ahead and we went back to frame one just uh, select all of the um, points here just hit G to grab and move it up around the eye and now with this one selected we just hit control P and it parents it to that and now if we scrub through the timeline it tracks with it okay now some point in time my eye will get cut off like right there and to fix that we can just keyframe just keyframe all of them right here by hitting I on this frame go up here ahead of it and then move them up a little bit and hit I again and then go back to where it gets cut off somewhere in the center there and then just select these top ones G to grab move them up hit I and in fact we could even do these bottom ones a bit too um, now nah, we'll leave them alone. Okay, so now if we scrub through the timeline, we see it moves with the eye. Okay, you get the idea. So back to frame one. Now uh, let's give it a name instead of just mask. Let's just call it eye. Okay, and now we'll move on to the compositor, and we're going to delete this render layers here. We don't need that. And let's add a um, let's add another output a viewer node that way we have our backdrop so we got our composite node and our viewer node and now let's add an input and we'll use a movie clip and we'll use the same clip that we used before we'll put this up here and now we'll add another one another input and this will be our mask And then we just select I for the mask. Select anti-aliasing to that will smooth out the edges. Uh, we're going to feather it as well, and change the screen size to fixed because we don't want to go by the camera screen size, but we want to make it a fixed size. And the fixed size will be the same size as this video here, which is uh, um, oh 640 by 480. Okay, and now let's go ahead and see, connect that to our viewer nodes so we see what the output is. Now let's go ahead and add, um, to add a mix node, color and mix, and add the mask to this bottom one here so we can see where it is. Um, masking it off um, oh wait a minute sorry add this to the factor there 
So now you can see where it's masking it off, right there on the eye. And we want to move this up here to where that dot is. And the way to do that is just use a transform. So Shift A, go down to Distort, go down to Transform, and connect that in there. And we're going to mess with the X and Y values. So we'll move the X over and just center it up. And then the Y up. Somewhere in there. Looks pretty good. Okay. So that's where we want it. You can also adjust scale and angle, but we're not going to mess with those today. Um, let's go ahead and move this down. And the next thing we want to do is we want to copy this transform. And I'll show you why. Because, uh, well, if we just add, uh, yeah, let's just. Hit Control C to copy this, Control V to paste, and move this up here. Add, oh, let's add our image from up here, and add this to the other part of the mix node, and you see it puts the eye up there. Now, as you can see, what we're doing is we're just moving the original image up this way we're shifting it up this way so that what's being masked off reveals the eye behind it because really um, this image is being shifted completely like that okay now we'll forget the transforms for now and it almost looks complete but the problem is is it's a bit of rough around the edges it's too sharp. We need to blend it. So for that, we go back down to our um, motion tracker, our video clip editor, and we will, with all of these selected, we would just hit um, Alt and S and drag it out like this. And this is creates a feathering effect. So we'll just go somewhere in there, and as you can see. That pretty much solved the problem. Now, if you scroll through the timeline, oh, sorry, if you scroll through the timeline, it resets. There's something we need to do too when we feather it. So let's do it again. Um, go over here and uh, feather reset animation. Click on that, and now. We should be good. Now if we scroll through the timeline, it won't change. And that's all there is to it, really. So if we want to render, I don't know why it's taking so long to render. Probably because I'm doing screen cast casting and I've had my computer on for a long time. It should have rendered by now. Oh, wait a minute. Be sure to connect the image also to the composite node, <laughs> not just the viewer node, and then just render it again. Okay, there we go. That makes more sense. And then I can zoom in here and And you can see it blends pretty well. The lighting and everything. So that's basically all there is to it. Now, since I do have a little bit more time, um, you could also uh, change the scale if you wanted to. Let's say a 1.2 and then do that with this one too. Make, they have to be equal. 1.2 and you could make it a lot bigger eye. You could uh, move it down on the y-axis a little bit. Oops, a little too much. Somewhere in there, 45.760. So make this one the same, 45.760. 